bigger profits in your small business? Like many of us, I'm sure you're feeling it. Business is hard. Now more than ever, you need a plan to help your business not just survive, but thrive. I'm Marcia Reiner. I'm a business strategist on a mission. I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees sustainable profitability and guides your growth. I want to share strategies that I've earned and learned with you on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. Today, I'm excited to have a new guest on with me today, Kyle Porter, and we are talking about how to talk about your business. Kyle is the founder of Guidepost Marketing and a successful local business owner as well. He started Guidepost because he saw that there was a lot of business owners who are great at what they do, but who struggle to talk about their business and market their business in a way that gets customers' attention. He believes that people who start businesses should have all the tools they need to make marketing simple so that they can help make an impact that they would want to make the world and make, excuse me, to make on the world and to serve their communities in a way that's powerful. He knows that the strong businesses are built on a foundation of strong relationships, and he's developed a simple three model phase three-phase model to help businesses build deeper relationships with their customers. If I can get my mouth to work, we'll be good. Welcome to the podcast, Kyle. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Excellent. So super excited today because I think this is a very, very important topic. Business owners suck when it comes to talking about their business. And I think they need some help about how to really make that impact. So where would you say business owners should start when they're looking at making that conversation better? Well, there's really two big problems that a lot of business owners have when they talk about their relationship or their business. One is that we know what we do so well and our knowledge of typically what we do is so deep that we talk in a way that's above our customers' heads. We make it so that it's really difficult for them to understand because we are so familiar with it um, and we use language that they don't understand. We talk about it in a way that they don't understand. And the fact of the matter is people just don't step into confusion. When they're confused about what you do and how you help them, um, they aren't gonna take action. So we've gotta be really, really clear and we've gotta figure out a way to really simplify our message um, so that we can communicate how we actually impact our customers' lives. And that's the other problem that people have is they talk about their business as though their business is about them. And they say, well, here's all the things I can do. And here's why I'm so great at what I do. And here's who I am. And here's what I've done. And people don't care. They just care so about true. how your business can help them live a better life. Because at the end of the day, we're all here to create transformations in our customers' lives to help them solve problems. And if we don't communicate that transformation really clearly, then people are just going to walk away. Ah, so true. We tend to talk in techno babble, right? We have this like sayings and, you know, one of my friends said um, a few months back, uh, she said that it doesn't matter how long or what I'm doing or what the process is. It's, you just want the result, right? You want to get from point A to point B. Who cares how we do it, right? That's exactly right. I um my my first business that that I owned was a kids martial arts school, and a lot of times I had parents that would come in and that would ask questions like, "What kind of martial art do you teach here?" And I always hated getting that question because it came from parents who had no foundation and no experience in martial arts. And so I've got to go into this kind of really deep answer that doesn't actually help them because what they want is. They want a better life for their kid. They want their kid to be more focused, more disciplined, more respectful. They want to you know, have a fun outlet where they can be fit and they can be active and all those things. And so me explaining the intricacies and nuances of the actual martial art that I was teaching them wasn't actually helping them get any closer to the goal that they had for themselves. And, and that's what a lot of people do when they talk about their business is they talk about, well, here's the process that we use and here's the plan that we have and here's the thing. Like, and it just, it doesn't matter. What we, what we really need to talk about initially is, what are our customers' goals? What do they want out of their life? And what's stopping them from getting there right now? And if we can get clear on those two things, then we can step in and we can say, look, here's how I've helped people like you before. Here's how I've done this. Here's how I know what you feel like. And we give them, then we give them that plan and they go, okay, this is somebody that I can trust to guide me and lead me to the outcome that I want for my life. Mm, that's great. So it does involve asking questions or, or better yet, leading the customer to ask the right questions, right? 
That's it. Yeah. And, and that's really the first thing that really with any business that I start that I work with is let's start by figuring out who we're talking to, because if you're, let's say you're a fitness coach, it's going to be, you may, you may coach a 70 year old woman and a 24 year old man. You may coach them to do exactly the same thing. The process that you take them through might not change at all, but the reason that they have for actually taking on that journey and going on that path, they're completely different. And so the outcome that they're looking for, you know, where one of them may be looking to maximize their athletic potential and the other one just wants to play in the yard with their grandkids. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, you have to paint that picture of here's where you are, here's where you're going. And there's this gap, there's this tension between, you know, where you want to be and where you currently are. And I can help you bridge that gap. I love that. You know, um, you brought, you brought an important piece up talking to them where they are, right? What are some of the questions that we could do and ask uh, so that we can find out exactly where that listener is so we can take the conversation from there? Right. So one of the things I always ask is, what are you struggling with? And the, when we talk about customers' problems, there's really three levels that we that we talk about problems on. One is what's called the external level, which is the actual physical tangible things. Maybe they're 20 pounds overweight. Maybe they need a haircut. Maybe they are like, you know, they don't have a wedding cake for their daughter's wedding, you know, like whatever the problem is. And then by extension of that problem, there's some sort of internal feeling. There's some sort of, hey, look, I'm going through this specific thing that I can actually put my finger on. But then we start to get a little more nuanced when we talk about the fear and the frustration and the overwhelm and the stress and all those things that those people are, are experiencing as a result of that external problem. And then when we zoom out even further, we talk about it at a philosophical level and we say, hey, look, this isn't fair. You shouldn't have to deal with this. You know, you should have all the tools that you need. Um, you know, you should have a coach in your corner who can help you, you know, walk the path to the body that you want. You shouldn't have to wonder what to eat when you wake up in the morning. You should have all those things. And people, you know, by the time you start talking about it on those three levels where you say, hey, look, you've got a little bit of weight to lose. You've got, you've let yourself, you let yourself get out of shape, um, you know, and that can feel overwhelming. It can feel frustrating. It can feel hopeless. And we don't think that's fair. You know, at such and such coaching, we think that you should have a clear, simple, easy to follow nutrition plan with simple workouts that don't require you to spend hours in the gym. And we think you should have, you know, a coach in your corner who believes in you and sees the potential that you can see in yourself, you know, and all of a sudden we've got people going like, yeah, that's what I need, you know? And, and when we talk about it at that level, at those three levels specifically, people really start to pay attention because you're, you're hitting those pain points in a way that feels like you're, you're doing respect to them and you're, you're actually invested in their outcome as much as they are. Wow, another great nugget that you hit on. So there's the three ones. There's the external, the internal, and then the um, philosophical. philosophical. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that third one that you mentioned you mentioned it in a different way that I've not heard of before. Most of the times you talk to their fears or whatever, but you kind of pulled your chair around and got on their side of the table and you're going, yeah, this isn't fair. You weren't given the tools or you didn't have the knowledge or you know, nobody was on your side on this. I love that. I mean, that's, that's right. really super powerful stuff right there. Good, Definitely. okay. So the next thing that I start to think about too, and kind of building on that, is I start to think in terms of what I call triggering events. So what are the what are the things that are happening in their life? And again, these happen on an external basis that are going to cause them to start to seek out a company like whatever it is that you do. So using the same you know fitness coach example, you know, it's I'm on vacation with my family and I don't want to take my shirt off when I go to the beach or, you know, I've got the high school reunion coming up or, you know, my wedding is coming up. My daughter's wedding is coming up. You know, the, there are these events in our life where the pain of that problem becomes acute. And most of the time, humans are just incredibly adaptable. We're so good at living in pain and living with problems and we justify it and we, you know, we move past it and we ignore it and we kind of create these, these lifestyle habits that allow us to live with these problems. But what are the times when those problems really start to rear their head where we feel them more than we do on just an average day? So, you know, it's the, it's the holiday season again. You know, what does that mean for your customers? Or it's, you know, you just started a new job, you just got in a new relationship or stopped a relationship, you know, what are the different things, no matter what business you're in, that you start thinking, okay, when would someone begin to seek out my services? And then you kind of work backwards from there to how you can actually address those things. 
Wow, good stuff. Okay, so we talked about um, the 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 questions that we asked. We're finding the the different times in their life where they would come get you. Now, what do we do? So once you have identified kind of the triggering events and the problems we've created tension is really what we've done. We've taken a rubber band and we've stretched it way back, right? Now we have to let it go. We have to relieve that tension and we have to present them with a solution. The example I always give people is if you hum twinkle, twinkle, little star, but if you leave off the word are at the end of the song, so how I wonder what you, then there's this like, people are like, finish the song, you know, like it, 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 you have to offer that resolution. If you don't offer the resolution, then people leave frustrated and, and you don't, you don't actually get them to take action. So we have to step in now. And I always tell people, position yourself as the guide, position yourself as the person who can take your customer. You know, if we imagine it from a storytelling perspective, your customer is the hero in the story. They're the one who's actually undergoing this transformation. Your job is to step in and to be that guide for them, to say, hey, look, I've been here before. I know what this looks like. I know what this feels like. And I've helped people just like you get through this exact same thing. And so what you're doing is you're really leaning on two really important characteristics. One of them is empathy. I can put myself in your position and I know what you're feeling like. And we've already done that by talking about their problems, by talking about their goals, by sitting on the same side of the table. We've said, look, I, I get you. Like, I know what this feels like. But if I go to my personal trainer and I say, hey, look, I'm really struggling every night. I've been making myself a bowl of ice cream. I can't stop. You know, like, I don't know what to do. And I'm 20 pounds overweight. And my trainer looks at me and goes, me too. I could lose 20 pounds and I can't stop eating ice cream at night. Then I might feel some sense of camaraderie with that trainer, but he's not going to be my trainer. You know, I need somebody <laughs> who also has the authority to be able to say, I know exactly what that feels like. And a few years ago, I was going through the same thing, or I coached a client who was going through the same thing. And we actually came up with a really simple plan that made it easy for her to have the foods that she wanted and also lose the weight that she wanted to lose. And at that point I go, well, shoot, you've done this before. You've been through this with clients just like me. You know the ending of this story and you know how to navigate me through the story so that I can have that same happy ending. Great stuff, great stuff. And how did you know I eat a bowl of ice cream every night? Because <laughs> I eat a bowl of ice cream every night. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna be talking about what the solution is to get the sweet tooth away. That's right. Definitely, but um, I love it. So you're really, you're really creating that relationship with the customer and getting them to know that you know, you're on their side of the table, you're solving their problems, you can, you can solve their problems by taking them through the, I've done something similar in the past. All right. You know what's really, so, uh, just to, to kind of jut in there, yeah. I, always, I, lo I love storytelling as a framework. And, and what I always tell people when we're talking, and it's because stories, stories are so captivating to people. People love listening to stories. They love sitting around the campfire and hearing, you know, about what happened. And I mean, it's, it's how humans build community. And what we talk about when I talk about leading them as the guide is not just showing them I can help you get where you want to go, but it's I can help you transform into the kind of person who can do this on your own. That's what stories are about. You know, no matter what the actual objective of the story is, the story isn't about getting the girls, saving the the country or, you know, it's, it's not about that. It's about the hero of the story becoming the kind of hero that can do that thing. And so when we work with, when we work with our customers, the outcome almost becomes irrelevant because of the transformation that they go through by virtue of using our products. So we're talking about, about not just giving them what they want, but also helping them become the, become the kind of person who can get that thing. I like that. And also, I think one more thing is, is if you can get your client to see themselves in that role too, That's it. and be that hero, and they can feel like, yeah, he is talking about me and yeah, I could do that. And I could be that hero in that role. Um, I think that that's a, that's a real endearing piece as well that gets them to, to jump on. So that's why it's so right. important. I feel like to define your customer from the, from the outset is because if you've got a pattern of people that you've worked with who are all fairly similar to each other, you know, if I've worked with for accounting firms to help them get more clients and, you know, and retain more clients and, you know, all those things. And then I start working with a lawyer, then he goes, okay, well, this is pretty similar. You know, I can see mm -hmm. how this, I can see how, you know, you working with all these accounting firms could, you know, could also make you really well suited to work with my business because we're in similar businesses. You can do similar things. 
But if I work with an accounting firm and then I work with a home renovation company and then I work with an executive coach and then I work with a circus and then I work with a barber shop and I go, well, here, look who I work with. And they kind of go, well, I don't really know who you work with. You know, who is it? Because I can't really see myself in any of these stories where if you're able to niche down and you're able to say, here's who I'm here for, here's who I'm willing to serve, here's the group of people, you know, that are, you know, that I'm planting my flag right here and I'm saying, this is who I'm for, you know, then by extension, you get people going, okay, maybe you're not for me, but you're definitely going to be great at working with, you know, this group of people, or it gives you that peace of mind. If I am the accountant or the attorney or the, you know, whatever it is that, you know, that I see that I've done this work with this group and I go, okay, this is the person who's here for me. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Don't be afraid to go tight and, right. and niche down because other people will come to you. Um, but if you explain yourself in a simple, in a simple way, then um, more people will uh, raise their hand and go, like you said, you've worked with that person, that type of industry, then I'm very similar. I can meet that need in there. So we've been talking a lot about finding your ideal client. Um, is there any other piece that we should know about in finding your ideal client before we go back to what we say to them? So I think that each, each phase kind of overlaps with the next, right? Mm -hmm. we, can't, we can't start moving because the phase that I talk to people about or the step that I talk to people about after they've identified their ideal client is what is the offer that you're going to present to them? And a lot of businesses um, don't have that offer really dialed in. And I always tell people like, you need to have your offer so dialed in that you could literally stick a barcode on it and people could scan it and say, yes or no, I want this or I don't want this. And that means Ooh. how much does it cost? What do you get? How long does it take? Who's involved? You know, all of the different things really dialing into that offer so that it's not the accounting firm calling you up and saying like, Hey, we need more clients. Can you help us? And you kind of coming up with a custom plan or you working with a, you know, as a personal trainer with, you know, people who want to lose weight, you need to, you need to dial in and create services and, you know, really products as much as anything else that allow you to replicate and do the same thing in a really powerful way. And maybe you iterate, maybe you change, maybe you add in certain things as you realize, but your process and, and your product should grow over time so that you have really clear offers and it's, and it's, okay, well, here's the first thing you're going to do with me. And then after that, we're going to do this. And then after that, we're going to do this. And the reason why is because for people like you, going back to the customer, for people like you who I've worked with over and over and over again, this is the process that works. And I can trust this process because I've seen it work over and over again. I love it. And I think, I think business owners forget about the framework that they need to have, whether you are a chiropractor or a um, organizing company or a hairdresser or, or a trainer or an attorney, you know, I mean, there's so many variations and just because you provide a service doesn't mean you, you, I think they forget that they need to have a concise offer. That's right. And when they have that offer dialed in, then they're showing their client that they're prepared and ready to accept them. Even though it's just this process that they do, if they package it up in their mindset and be able to present it in that same mindset to the customer, I think that's a huge buying leverage that so many business owners forget to do. They just say, oh, here's my shingle. I can do anything for everybody and here it is. <laughs> That's right. The worst so. thing you want to hear. I mean, if you if you're going to if you're going to the surgeon or you're going to, I mean, like let's use a surgeon as an example, is you know, the worst thing you want to hear is, yeah, let's give this a try. You know, <laughs> the, so so if I'm going, if somebody's coming to your business and you're coming up with a brand new solution that you've never done before. A, you're not going to have a lot of confidence in your ability to create results with that solution, but you're also not going to be able to create a lot of confidence in your customers, you know, that you'll be able to provide those results for them. So if you say, hey, look, I've done this over and over again. I've seen this process work. I know how this story ends. And for you, it has a happy ending because you chose to work with me. That's a really powerful place to come from. And it makes things simpler. It makes them more straightforward. It streamlines, it streamlines your own work. And it also helps build a lot of confidence for your customers, too. I love it. This is really good stuff, Kyle. Keep going. Okay, so we've got our ideal client. We've, we've talked about our offer. Um, what else do we need to be able to say to our customers? What if we're just in that introduction phase um, and we're just trying to talk to them about what we do? I mean, I think I, I, think I understand what we would say, but is there a cadence or, or, or a way that we would say it when we're just introducing our services to, for the first time? Absolutely. So if somebody comes to me and they say, Kyle, what do you do? 
then, and I say, well, I run a marketing company, then they're going to say, okay, like that's, that's great. And maybe they can use me. Maybe they have more questions, maybe, but I haven't invited them into anything. But if somebody comes to me and says, Kyle, what do you do? And I say, well, you know how a lot of business owners really struggle to talk about what they do and their marketing often just kind of falls flat. Well, I help them come up with a really simple message that makes their marketing really effective. And I can deliver that service to them, you know, in a simple document inside of a week. So they've got all the tools they need to build, you know, build the marketing campaign that's going to grow their business. Then they go, wow, that's really interesting. Like, because what I've done is I've, I've addressed a problem. I've created that tension. And then I've said, hey, look, my job is to resolve that tension. Here's the problem that I solve. So I'm not speaking in terms of the services I provide, the products I've created, any of that stuff. I'm speaking in terms of the people that I serve and the problems that I solve. And what that means is people are, people are constantly scanning their environment. It's hardwired into us. People are constantly scanning their environment for things in the environment that are going to allow them to survive and thrive. They're, going to, they're looking for the things that are going to solve their problems, which is why, as humans, we filter out so many details of what's going on around us. If we didn't, we would never get anywhere. We would go, oh, look at this pin. Well, it's blue and it clicks and it, you know, it does, it has these little not like we, we ignore all that stuff because we go, that doesn't help me right now. You know, I've got all these problems. I've got these things going on. And so I'm going to ignore that information because right now it doesn't meet any of my needs. So what they we should, get, they should live in that line, but yes. Right. And so what we end up doing is we need to say, Hey, look, Maybe you're going through this problem, but this is the problem that I solve. This is what I do. So if you're a business who's struggling with a lack of clarity in your messaging and you sit down at a computer and you want to write a blog post or you want to write an email or you want to redo your website or you want to put a social media post out or you want to do whatever it is that you want to do to create awareness and engagement around your brand and you sit there and you look at a blinking cursor over and over again and you don't know what to say, to talk about your business in a way that, people, that makes people pay attention, I'm the guy to help with that. So I can make, I, I give you the words that people are going to listen to so that you can talk about your business in a way that's effective and so that it grows. And people go, man, I've been there. I know exactly what that feels like. And I'm feeling it with you. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. and also, and, and what I also do is, is help people, help train people to navigate, you know, new problems that arise because like, I mean, this year has been a perfect example for six months. We've all been sitting around going, what do I do now? You know, and. Right. And if we take that same approach and we start thinking, okay, let's look at our customers and the fact that we've been shut in our houses and all of our meetings are taking place on Zoom, we can't do anything in person, people are getting sick, there's all, all the different factors. Okay, let's plug that into our customer's life and then make an educated guess. What are they probably struggling with? What's hurting? How do, you know, and how can we adapt what we do if we're not in the business of, of the service that we provide? If I'm, not a, if I'm not a marketing guy, if I'm a problem solver for small business owners, then I can say, okay, well, small business owners have a completely new set of problems in 2020 than they did in 2018 or they did in 2019. And my job is to step in and solve them. So I have to pivot. I have to adapt. I have to change course. And if I can do that effectively, my business stays strong and the people who can't do it, their business suffers. Mm, so true and so necessary in our time right now because everybody is suffering um, in one way, shape or form because business is different. And I think your, your, your idea of understanding your, your ideal customer and what is different about their business and coming in with a solution or a supportive role then you're going to be more attractive to your customer. And if you say that and you, you put it in the language that you've just listed down, hey, these are the things that are going through. And by the way, that's exactly what I do. Your customers are going to perk up their ears and go, oh, that's interesting. Nobody right. said that to me yet in mm -hmm. exactly that format. So let me find out more. And, and I'm a fan. Marketing isn't here sign on the dotted line. As soon as you hear my words, it's moving it to the next conversation, the That's next right. step along the way. And if you can get them to go, I want to hear more, then, then you've won the game right there. That's right. That's right. So and, good stuff. And it's, it's positioning yourself as the guide, but also the right guide. And, you know, mm -hmm. you look at, at, powerful stories all over the place you look at star wars and luke skywalker has obi-wan kenobi and he has yoda and they're his guides and they're the perfect guides for him and then you look at the lion king and simba has timon and pumbaa and they step in and they're the guides for him and frodo has gandalf and harry potter has dumbledore and 
Katniss Everdeen has Hey Mitch, and there's all these different guides, but they're the perfect guides for that individual. If I take Yoda and I put him in Star Wars and now he's Simba's guide, it doesn't fit, right? He's not the right guide for Simba. He's the right guide for Luke Skywalker. And so from a business standpoint, you're not going to be the right fit for everybody. There's going to be a certain subset of people based on your personality. I mean, a lot of small business owners are not going to work with the guy who's got tattoos all down his arm and wears WrestleMania shirts and backwards hats. And that's okay. That's totally fine because the people who see me and go like, that's my people. That's who I want to work with. It's more fun for them. It's more fun for me. We get better results out of it. And so by being really intentional about positioning yourself in the marketplace, you're able to bring in the people who you are uniquely qualified to help. Ooh, chills up my arms. You're so right. Because there's, you can't help everybody. There's personality types. And the worst thing you want to work with is a stiff person who's going to look down on you or or, or not do what you ask, they don't respect you. I mean, there's so many different variations of, of choosing who you want to work with. And That's you right. should always work with the people that you enjoy and you want to hang out with. That's right. And I think that's, that's, that's an awesome, awesome little tweak to the whole conversation that just is, is perfect. It's perfect. Okay, so, so I want to be Yoda to my clients. And so now I think the only way for me to become Yoda to my clients is to niche down and find out who my clients really are and those people that would match with that Yoda, right? Even baby Yoda. That's right. And then from, so, an action, from an action-oriented standpoint, once you've figured out, here's the kind of guide that I am, and here's the kind of hero that I'm looking for, and here's the mm -hmm. problems that they're going through and the goals that they have for themselves, then the problem or then the, the next step is to stop talking about yourself and stop tar and start talking about them and their life and what they're going through and people that you've worked with who are similar to them. But if you say, hey, look, I just signed a new client or, you know, we just opened our third location of our barbershop. Doesn't help me, you know, but if we say, hey, look, if you're struggling with this, here's this thing that I've created and I'd love for you to use it. Or here's a handy tip that you might use if you are looking to lose 15 pounds or here you know you're you're creating things that that are a dog whistle for your clients that Ooh. when when you put those things out your clients ears perk up where if i step into a busy you know a busy mall right now and i blow a dog whistle nobody hears it nobody pays attention but if there's a dog in the building he goes what's that you know, and so you need to start creating content in a way that most people are going to go, eh, I don't care. But the people who it's for are going to look at it and go, what a generous, thoughtful, creative way to solve my problems. You got me. Love it. Good stuff. Wow, Kyle, this has been a really impactful conversation here. And I know the listeners are just going to eat it up. I'm going to have to go back over this because I didn't have my little blue clicky pen here sitting. So I have my notepad, but no, no pen to write notes. So I'm going to go back over and take tons of notes because this was really good stuff. Okay. So where do customers or where do the listeners find out more about you? So I am at guidepostmarketing.com. Um, what I always invite people to do is I really am a big believer that relationships trump everything else when it comes to to building a business. So I always invite people, reach out directly to me, Kyle at guidepostmarketing.com. Send me an email. Let me know what you're going through. I would love to get on a call with you, help you. There's not a sales pitch coming. Just let's let's talk about it and let's figure out if we can't you know, come up with some solutions to help you grow your business and help you move things forward. Um, but guidepostmarketing.com, I've got some resources people can access that way. Um, and, and I'd love to get to know them. Love it. Thank you so much. Listeners, I hope you found an idea or two to put into your business today that'll make you more profitable. I know I've, I'm, like I said, I'm going to have to go over this again because there's so much juicy information. So thank you, Kyle. We appreciate you being on. Hey, considering what's happened to businesses this year, now more than ever, it's important to update your business plan. Not that fluffy business plan um, that's sitting up and getting dust or you did it five years ago, but an actionable plan to really grow your profits. So I invite you to check out my new Big Profit Strategy six-day sprint. In just one week, you'll have some fresh new outlook uh, and a real plan to help guide your growth. Join us because the next class is coming up really soon. Go to www.bigprofitsprint.com. So anyways, we would love to hear your 
your, uh, your questions, feedback, ideas for future shows. I know Kyle will be on. And if you have a question for him, you can always hit it up in the comments. And please subscribe to the podcast because there's more great information to go. And as always, you can catch Profit with a Plan on any of your favorite podcast players. We're looking forward to more great profitable information on next week's show. So until then, make your plans and profit with them. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks.